One of the challenges of being a priest is having to hear a confession. And hearing confession is often difficult when people want to lie to themselves about their rights. The right is, I have the right to keep soliciting even though I can tell you're on the telephone or you're busy in your work. I have the right to keep putting my hands on you because I feel like it because I was once a Navy jerk and there's no possible way you're that. But what I see is an abuse of American people. What I hear is an abuse of your attitude and what I know about you is that you have no rights in America, but that's not true. Because you were born and bred here all the way came from on the time of the Mayflower, but I am this woman who works at this fucking Dollar Tree who thinks I have rights to you. And because I think I have rights to you, I'm going to go to my job way early on a Monday morning, and I'm going to finish cutting off your beard because I feel like it. So my name might be Charlene in the shop, and it might not really be that because in Illinois, I can make my name be anything that I want it to be. And meanwhile, I'm going to watch an old biddy coming in with her really noisy truck for whatever reason to make her look so more impoverished, but in truth, she's just lazy about getting a car or she doesn't have the money to do it by far. In America, we have rights, but in America, we have people who think that they have rights to people. And once again, a homeless man has woken up with less beard on. And what I'm going to say to the biological family that has produced this hatred is that they all deserve to go to hell, and they probably will. Because at no time did Jesus Christ say to you, you have rights to put your hands on a total stranger. And you have rights to do these things because you think that's your little brother in Christ. And at no time do you have the right to touch a man because you, little sister of Christ, of Satan, think you have rights to teach a man a lesson. At no time have you been involved with this man's life until he lost his spouse and partner. But then you thought you'd hit, you thought you'd steal his property, you thought you'd lie to his, his apartment complex, you thought you'd interfere with his bank account, you thought you'd fuck around in his, his actual legal records, and you think you can get away with it because if the four of you gang up, then he's the liar and you're not, and that's full of shit. And if the four of you attack his mental health, then you think you've got rights, but you don't, you've lied every little bit. And you think you're somehow put attached to God, but at what point did you ever think you were godly when you walked onto that property behind him and he said, you may not be here, but your bastard of a husband said, we'll do whatever the fuck we want. But in truth, he violated the law. At no time did the person who actually technically and contract rents the fucking unit say you could be here, and at no time did that property company say your bastard husband could be here bullying someone on the property. So let's be clear, little sister, you're a failure in front of God. Not only did you fail your life, you stood against your little brother in a court of law trying to fuck all over his mental health records, actually taking his legal records and screwing them over, actually going to his home and changing names on documents that weren't yours to touch at all. So let's be clear, how much of his computer did you ruin? And how many times did you and your other sister thought you could reprogram him with her immoral and evil, w illegal ways so that when she says stop, he freezes? And now he's being sexually assaulted every day. Congratulations. You put your whole family at lurch. But which is your family? Your little brother is not technically your family. He's third party to you. So anyone outside of that who's not actually biologically related to that man is actually a total stranger committing sexual assault. 